Well, hello. I guess it's that time of year, Halloween. And as we come upon that, that reminds me of another story. One of my favorites, in fact. Um, this story happens to be about two of my favorite um, little guys, uh, Rod and Jason Earl. Rod at the time was probably six and Jason about nine. And Rod had been going on for some time trying to prove to everyone that he wasn't afraid of anything. In fact, anybody said anything that scared him wouldn't scare me. I'm not afraid. This had gone on so long that everybody was pretty tired of hearing how not scared Rod is of just about everything. So anyway, um, I was at his uh, mom and dad's one night and we were talking about Rocky Point Haunted House and Rod pipes up. I'm not afraid. Well, I had decided at that very moment, this is time to take Rod and teach him a little lesson. So after planning things out with his mom and dad, made a decision to pick him up after the school carnival along with his older brother, Jason. Now, Jason wasn't really thrilled about this, but he's the older brother and I'm sure he was thinking, I gotta take care of my younger brother. Well, I picked them up and as they got in the car before we took off, there were a few instructions that uh, we needed to go over. And first of all, I explained to them you know, that they would be seeing a lot of uh, strange creatures, vampires, uh, Frankenstein, werewolves, zombies, really bizarre monsters. And they needed to be ready for it. And also that sometimes it looks like you're just walking along and boom, out of the ground pops up one of these monsters. But the most important thing is, is if they were to hear chainsaws and that they were close by, hurry and hit the ground. Because as they come up with the chainsaws, the first thing they're going for is the head. That got their attention. And then I said, boys, if by chance someone or something gets us separated, I want you to know that all you have to do is just scream and I'll come running. I'll do whatever it takes to get to you, but just scream as loud as you can. Are you ready? Okay, let's get going. So we start off and it's a pitch black, dark night. Perfect night if you wanna to go to a spook alley. And this spook alley uh, happened to be about 40 minutes away. It was out in North Ogden and it was at Rocky Point. Now Rocky Point in itself is the best location for a spook alley. It's way out in the middle. At the time, there wasn't a lot around and there was a little dirt road that you had to follow. It just wound up, just up and around. And as you got to the top, there was a round big house that sat at the top of Rocky Point. I couldn't pick a better location. It was spooky and it was spooky in the day, let alone what it would look like at night. <clears throat> This was going to be fun. Now, I really didn't want to go to this spook alley because it freaked me out. But in order just to sort of see if uh, Rod had ever admit that he might be actually a little afraid, it was just more than I could pass up. So we're heading along and uh, we've been going about five minutes. And I thought, we'll just keep you know, the radio off and just keep it quiet so they can really start to think about some of the things that we were talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, been going about maybe five, ten minutes when I hear Aunt Gail. Uh, yeah, Rod. Can, uh, can we stop at Grandpa Hassler's? I said, well, well Rod, why? Oh, I'd just like to get a butcher knife. Said, oh, I'm sorry, Rod. We're way too past Grandpa Hassler's. Can't stop now. Oh, it's quiet again. Not even five minutes later, from the back seat comes. Uh, Aunt Gail, do you have a flashlight? 
Sorry, Rod. I don't have a flashlight. A little bit later. Not too long. Aunt Gail? Why, yes, Rod. Um, can we stop at a store? And I said, why? So we could buy a butcher knife and a flashlight? Sorry, Rod, Aunt Gail only has enough money to pay for us to get into the spook alley. Not enough money to stop and buy a butcher knife and a flashlight. At this point, Jason, who's in the front seat, just says, Rod, just say you're afraid. Just say you're afraid and we can go back home. Let's just get this stopped. And Rod, he pauses. I'm not afraid. And off we go. Well, we are now probably within five, ten minutes of uh, the base of Rocky Point. When all of a sudden, in the darkness, you see this great big searchlight going around. And it's such a perfectly black night that it's obvious there's some kind of big searchlight going on. So I hear in the back seat, Aunt Gail? Yes, Rod? What is that? I'm like, what's what? That big light. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? What is it? Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. What do you mean it's not good? What is it? What's going on? That means that Frankenstein is out and possibly the werewolves are about. Jason from the front seat. Aunt Gail, I know you are joking. That is not true. That is not happening. You are just joking. I don't say a word. I just keep driving. It is perfect. I'm telling you, I couldn't have planned it any better. As we came off the highway and around the bend to the base of Rocky Point, there sat the great big search spotlight. Oh, I heard both boys gasp. At that point, Jason said, please, please, let's just go home. Rod, just say you're afraid. I could tell Jason didn't want to be there. And it wasn't really his fault. And I didn't really want to go. This was an expensive place for me to go to take two boys that really didn't want to go. So I just quietly turned the car around. And we headed back down the road. Hadn't even been two minutes away when from the back seat, Rod says. I wasn't afraid. Didn't scare me. Oh, my heck. Okay. At the closest convenient spot, I make a U-turn. And I say in my cheerful Aunt Gail voice, Okay, let's just drive to the top of Rocky Point. And we'll see what's happening. Oh, I heard some ear air intake. And as we headed up that rocky dirt road and people were standing around and lights were around and we came to the top of Rocky Point and it was scary. They had strobe lights going. It was dark. There were luminous lights in the darkness. People everywhere that you really couldn't tell. A lot of great big old ambulance right out in the middle and all kinds of debris and junk and monsters walking around oh boy there was silence in my car we sat there for a while and i decided let's just get out of the car that should be enough to get and gail i'm afraid so we open the door rod is in the back. Jason jumps out and you can hear him huffing. And from the back seat, Rod says, you can't make me get out of this car. And Jason turns to his little brother and says, Rod, this is all your fault. This is all your fault. You get out of the car and let's get this over with now. So he reaches in the back and grabs his little brother and out we go. And it is scary. 
I'm just telling you, it's freaking me out. You hear people screaming and it's dark and there's people everywhere, but you really can't see their faces and you hear weird sounds and chains and all kinds of noises and freaky things going on. We're standing there in the line and as we get close to the ambulance and we're standing there, somebody jumps up out of that, freaks the boys out. Jason turns to me. I can see the tears in his eyes and he goes, please, please, Aunt Gil, don't make us go. I can't do it. I don't care how much I just want to hear Rod fess up that he might be just a titch afraid. I can't do it. So I grab both little boys by their hands. We head back to the car, get them in the car, lock the doors and start to back out. And Rod from the back seat, I wasn't afraid. I wasn't the one that wanted to go. Step on the brakes, pull back into the spot, and say, out, 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 here we go. We are in the line now, and we are in that line, and those little boys are just like bricks. I'm pushing hard, stead, stone bricks for going forward, going forward, inch by inch. Every horrific, ugly sound that comes from a spook alley is going on. I say, as we get to the place and pay our money, Rod, you are going first. And then he yells, Heck no, Aunt Gal, you've got to go first. Well, as we're going through and I'm pushing those little boys and I have my arms wrapped around them and it is horrific. I am scared. I don't want to be here. And they only let you go in your group. So it was one adult and two little boys. And as we're going through and they're jumping out and everything's happening, it is horrific. I know it only takes about 10 minutes to get through. It seemed like two days. Those boys were as tense as tense could be. Their bodies were stiff. They could barely move. Anytime a chainsaw started up, those boys were flat on the ground. It was spooky. Finally, the ordeal is over and we reach the exit and we walk out. I sigh. Jason sighs. And we start walking and Rod's behind us. And Rod, just a few steps behind us, says... I wasn't scared. That wasn't scary at all. As I turned around to see this, I see just three or four feet behind Rod is a tall, cloaked individual. It looks like he's about seven feet tall, all in a black cloak. You can't see anything. Even his hands are dark. The fingers look long, but they're black. The only thing you can see is two electronic red glowing beady eyeballs. <clears throat> oh, okay. I don't say a word because I know what's going to happen. I just walk a little bit faster towards the car. Jason's right up there with me. Rod, of course, is a few feet behind explaining to everyone that it's not scary and that he wasn't scared. Just as we reach the car, I turn to Jason and say, run, jump in the car and lock your doors. Jason and I run, we jump, we lock the doors. And at that very moment, this hand reaches out and just gently touches Rod's shoulder. Rod turns around and screams. From the spot that he was at, it seemed to me he was at least five feet away from the car. The next thing you know, he is plastered on my window. Let me in! I hurry. I open the door. It wasn't even this far. And he flew in over the top of my head and landed in the back seat yelling, Lock the door! I locked the door. I was giggling. Jason was giggling. We turn and look at each other and giggle. Don't say a word. 
Just start the car, start to back out. And we are safely on our way with the doors locked and Rod sitting in the back. And from the very back seat, we hear, I wasn't scared. That didn't scare me. Rocky Point Haunted House. The best haunted house ever. Till next time.